Water is essential for life as we know it. But how do planets like Earth get their water? How do they become habitable for living beings? These are some of the questions that astronomers have been trying to answer for decades, and they may have just found a clue in a distant star system. In this video, we will explore the latest discovery of water in the inner region of a disk of gas and dust around a young star called PDS-70, which hosts at least two giant planets. We will also learn how this finding offers evidence of a mechanism to supply water to potentially habitable planets already during their formation, in addition to the later impacts of water-bearing asteroids. Finally, we will discuss the implications of this discovery for our understanding of planet formation and the origin of life. PDS-70 is a very young star in the constellation Centaurus, located nearly 400 light-years away from Earth. It has a mass of about three-quarters of our Sun and is approximately 5.4 million years old. That may sound old to us, but it's actually very young for a star. For comparison, our Sun is about 4.6 billion years old. This young star is not alone. It has a disk of gas and dust around it, which is the material from which planets are born. This disk has a radius of about 140 astronomical units, which is about 140 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The disk also has a large gap in it, which indicates that some of the material has been cleared out by the gravitational influence of planets. Indeed, PDS-70 has at least two confirmed planets orbiting it, named PDS-70b and PDS-70c. They are both gas giants, similar to Jupiter in size and mass. They are also very young, estimated to be less than 10 million years old. They are still growing by accreting gas and dust from the disk around them. PDS-70b and PDS-70c are among the first planets to be directly imaged by telescopes, meaning that we can see them as separate points of light from their star. This is very difficult to do, because planets are much fainter and closer to their stars than stars are to each other. Most of the planets we know outside our solar system have been detected indirectly by measuring how they affect their star's light or motion. These two planets were first detected in 2018 and 2019, respectively, by using a technique called coronagraphy, which blocks out the bright light of the star and reveals the fainter planets around it. They were observed by the Very Large Telescope, VLT, of the European Southern Observatory, ESO, in Chile, using an instrument called SPHERE, Spectro-Polarimetric High Contrast Exoplanet Research. PDS-70 is a unique star system that allows us to witness planet formation in action. By studying its disk and its planets, we can learn more about how planets are born and evolve and what makes them suitable for life. But there is something else hidden in the disk around this star, something that could change our understanding of how planets get their water and become habitable. Here I'm talking about water vapor. Yes, water vapor in the inner region of a disk that has planets. This is the latest discovery made using the James Webb Space Telescope. Water vapor is not uncommon in space. It can be found in interstellar clouds, comets, asteroids, and even some exoplanets. However, finding water vapor in a planet-forming disk is very interesting because it implies that water can be incorporated into planets during their formation. Water is essential for life as we know it. It is also a key ingredient for making rocky planets like Earth. It can act as a lubricant that helps dust grains stick together and form larger bodies called planetesimals. These planetesimals can then collide and merge to form larger bodies called protoplanets, which can eventually become full-fledged planets. Water can also affect the temperature and chemistry of the disk and influence the migration and evolution of planets. For example, Water can freeze and form ice beyond a certain distance from the star, called the snow line. This can increase the amount of solid material available for planet formation and lead to the formation of giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn. The detection of water vapor in the disk around PDS-70 was surprising for several reasons. First, it was unexpected to find water so close to the star, where the temperatures are very high and the radiation is very strong. Second, it was challenging to detect water in such a complex and dynamic environment where there are many other molecules and dust particles that can interfere with the signal. Third, it was remarkable to detect water in a disk that has planets, which suggests that there is a connection between water and planet formation. 
This discovery raises many questions about how water forms and distributes in disks around young stars and how it affects the formation and habitability of planets. To answer these questions, we need to look at how water originates on planets in general and on Earth in particular. The discovery offers evidence of a mechanism to supply water to potentially habitable planets already during their formation, in addition to the later impacts of water-bearing asteroids. The origin of water on Earth and other rocky planets is still a matter of debate. One possibility is that water was present in the disk from which the planets formed and was incorporated into them as they grew. Another possibility is that water was delivered to the planets later by comets and asteroids that collided with them. Both scenarios may have played a role, but the relative contribution of each one is unclear. Some studies suggest that most of the water on Earth came from asteroids, while others suggest that most of it came from the disk. The answer may depend on the specific conditions and history of each planetary system. The detection of water vapor in the disk around PDS-70 suggests that water can be present in the disk at an early stage of planet formation, and that it can survive the high temperatures and radiation near the star. This means that water can be incorporated into planets as they form, especially in the inner region of the disk where terrestrial planets are expected to form. However, this does not exclude the possibility that water can also be delivered to planets later by comets and asteroids. In fact, some studies suggest that comets and asteroids may have different isotopic compositions of water than the disk, and that these differences can be used to trace the origin of water on planets. For example, some studies suggest that Earth's water has a similar isotopic composition to that of carbonaceous chondrites, which are a type of asteroid rich in organic matter and water. Therefore, by measuring the isotopic composition of water in different parts of the disk and in different types of comets and asteroids, we may be able to determine how much water came from each source and how it was distributed among the planets. So this new discovery opens up new possibilities for detecting and characterizing exoplanets. By using JWST and other infrared telescopes, we may be able to measure the water content and distribution on different disks and planets and compare them with our own solar system. We may also be able to detect signs of water in the atmospheres of exoplanets, which could indicate their potential habitability. It is a remarkable achievement that demonstrates the power and potential of JWST. It is also a testament to the curiosity and creativity of astronomers, who are constantly exploring the wonders of the universe, and a reminder that we are not alone in this vast cosmos, but part of a cosmic story that began with stars and planets, and may end with life. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning more about this amazing discovery and what it means for our understanding of planet formation and the origin of life. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. See you next time.